But up next, this is something that I've been talking about. Uh, yesterday, I, I engaged two women, two women who represent a lot of hope, particularly if you've been trying to get pregnant, you keep losing the pregnancy. Uh, well, they shared their stories with us in the hope that you would also find hope and know that there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Baba and Yvonne are here to share uh, very personal stories with us on the AM show. In the end, we, what we want to achieve is for you to be able to open up if you find yourself in a similar situation to also know that you are not alone, uh, but also for us to explore this kind of support system that exists. And then we will tell you about a special program that is happening uh, later today at the Coconut Grove Hotel. So can I welcome you both? Hello, Yvonne. Hello, thank you. And hello there, Baba. Hello. All right. Uh, so let me start with you. I, I think I want to start with you, okay. um, Yvonne. Um, so you, you've, and I say that together, you've lost five babies. Now we can talk about it like that. Yes. But <laughs> it, it's not like the way I've just put it, it's not easy like that. So how did it happen? Well, I, I like five years ago, I got married like six years ago, and immediately I got married, I got pregnant. Within three months, I lost the baby, and everybody thought it was normal. Oh, first pregnancy, you would lose it, so it's okay. I mean, you don't have to grieve a lot. So at least I grieved a little. Then the second one, that one I was almost, I was almost five months. Then I lost that, and with that, I had to push the baby out, because at least it had formed. The third one to the same, I had to push the baby out. That's three. Mm. Then the fourth one, that was a preterm. I was 29 weeks old. And with that one, it was emergency, so I had to go through cesarean. Yeah, so after that, 10 days later, the baby died. So you can imagine feeling the pain, no baby. <laughs> it was terrible. Mm. It was really and I, and I can imagine that there were people that you knew who were also pregnant just about the same time. Yes, my friend, who is now sitting by me, we were pregnant at the same time, the fourth one, and we're due for cesarean the same time. So you can imagine, when she gave birth, she couldn't even tell me. And because the pain was still there, I couldn't even see the baby. till at least, I think the baby was about eight months before she was, I was allowed to see the baby. Yes. Wow. wow. Uh, that, that's really sad. We'll continue from where we left off, but we want to hear... Uh, uh, Baba, you lost you lost one child, but this is a baby that you had also given birth to and seen. How did it happen? I got married seven years ago and so became pregnant two years after. I was really excited because it was my first pregnancy and I was beginning to wonder if I had a problem. You know, so it was really exciting. But six months down the line, my water broke and the doctors told me, I had no idea what that meant, mm -hmm. you know. I thought it was not a big deal, but the doctors told me that, no, if the baby, the baby is likely to come out in 24 hours, or at, at most a week, and the baby won't survive. It was very terrible, but somehow they managed to keep the baby in me, um, using a lot of antibiotics, bed rest, etc. Uh, by the by, the baby survived till 32 weeks, mm. and then an infection set in. Um, so I had to. But the baby was still at this same point. The baby was still in the womb. The baby was still in the womb. The baby was still alive, um, and I had a lot of hope because you go to hospital and he's still kicking. He's fine, you know. And I remember one day my doctor said, "This baby is a miracle," and. I mean, what he's doing is wonderful. We, we don't typically get babies like this, so I'm sure he will sail through. And he did, so 32 weeks, that's eight months roughly. Mm -hmm. uh, when they you were almost there, there at this point. There. Yeah. Actually, doctors were waiting for 34 weeks okay. to take him out. So at 32 weeks, I woke up one midnight in a lot of pain. Apparently, I was in labor. I didn't know. Um, so my, my mom gave me some painkillers to take. I, we waited till morning, got to the hospital, and they said we needed to take this baby out now. But I was feeling sick, because the, the infection had affected me as well. Mm -hmm. So I was beginning to feel sick. So I was rushed to theater, baby was taken out, 
um, six hours later, he was dead. <sighs> did, you, did you see the baby? Um, that is the difficult part for me because my doctor promised he would bring the baby for me to see him, but he never did. Why? A good question. I have no idea. So later on, he came to my bedside to say that, oh, your baby is fine, but we wanted to rush him to the neonatal intensive, yeah, the intensive care unit. So um, you'll see your baby soon. And the pediatrician also came to tell me that your baby is fine. We're working on him. He's breathing well. Um, so you'll see your baby soon. I said, okay, well, then I'm likely to see my baby. Hmm. But when he died, nobody told me. Wow. So I was lying in hospital. My mom would come wearing white. So this is like how many hours after the birth? So um, the baby died six hours after birth. Mm -hmm. um, but I was in hospital for four days, which is typical of cesarean. And nobody told me that the baby was dead. Yeah. So my mom would come in wearing white, laughing. Everybody comes in and like, oh, congratulations. So I had no idea. The only, the only thing was I kept asking my husband, so when he went today, how was the baby? Mm -hmm. You know, is he fine? And he'll say, yeah, he's fine. You know, he's okay. Oh, I want to go and see my baby. And everybody's like, no, you have to recover first. So the day I was discharged from hospital, I told him that, look, let's just pass through and see my, I, I need to see my baby. And he says, no, you are going to rest until you are recovered. You're not seeing your baby. This? It never came. Was this the doctor's voice or this was your husband's? This was my husband and my mom and my dad and all my family people. Uh, so, I mean, it, it didn't click that something would have mm. gone wrong. So I get home, I sleep, wake up. Then everybody enters my room. My husband holds my hand and my big sister holds my other hand. And that was when it dawned on me. I was like, my baby is dead. And he said, yeah. Wow. And I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever felt anything like what I felt that day. It was the worst feeling ever. And I, you know, I wonder, um, Yvonne and Baba, if you, even though now you have two children, Baba, and then you also do have two, Yvonne. Do you, do you relive those moments? Do you remember those children that you lost? Yes, I do. Especially the last one. I mean, I was with the baby at Niku. We go there every morning. After I was even discharged from the hospital, I go there every morning to visit the baby. But the, that particular day, the baby died. I wasn't well. So I asked my husband to go. So I think he didn't even get to the hospital when he was called that the baby was dead. And... Within 30 minutes, he was back to the house. So I asked him, ah, have you been to the hospital? He said, the doctor called me that the baby is okay, so he's, she's not in, I should come back home and come later. No, no, he had called my parents to tell them. By the time I realized, everybody had surrounded me, my parents, my, my siblings. It was then that I realized that there was something wrong. And then they broke the news to me. What I did was I ran out of the house. So I had to, they had to chase and hold me back. I mean, I, honestly, I can't forget that time. Because my husband couldn't even sleep for months. Because he was always with the baby. From work, he would come, he's with the baby. He couldn't sleep for months. You know, but he had to be strong for me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, 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 I know, but nobody can, can imagine what you've been through. No. Because... No. Nobody you lost remember. three before the fourth one. At this point, were you beginning to blame yourself? Yes, I, I did. I did. I, I, I thought it was a punishment. And, you know, when people are saying, don't worry, we'll come, I said, you don't understand because you are, you've not been through it. And, you know, my sister will always say, Yvonne, don't worry, you will get your baby. I said, no, you don't understand. So I think when you, later on, I, I always talk to myself, cry to myself, because nobody seems to understand what I'm going through. Yeah, so I, I, it was difficult. Honestly, it was difficult. Yeah. But Baba, you met Yvonne in the hospital. Uh, but at this point, you were both pregnant yeah. and positive. You're looking ahead. And then she lost hers. But yours survived, but you didn't tell her. Why not? I couldn't. I mean, she knew the day I was, I was due because we were due for a cesarean on the same day. So our babies were supposed to have the same birthday. And 
hers didn't happen. Uh, she sent me a text. I think I remember. She sent me a text saying congratulations. And I, I felt so terrible. So terrible. I, 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 I didn't know how to deal with that because I knew what she would be going through. Mm. You know? And we were in hospital together for like six months. We had gotten so close. We, we had made plans, naming plans, you know, uh, so many things, going out together, having fun together. And here I was, she was mourning and I had a baby. I, I felt it was just not fair. It was just not fair. And I had to hide the baby from her for eight months. There were times she, she, she would ask me to visit and I would find an excuse not to go because I just couldn't, I just couldn't show her the baby. It, it, was, it was just not fair. Hmm. Uh, but then you got pregnant again. Yes, this, I got pregnant. Uh, and this would be the fifth time. This is the, the fifth one. Yes. Now she's a girl. And surprisingly, we gave birth again on the same day. <laughs> oh, really? So your second child and her first child, they've got the same, the same birthday. birthday. The same birthday. Mm. Yeah, but she's a girl and hers is a boy. Okay, so that's like husband and, and we wife. Call them, no, we call them twins. <laughs> no, no, we call them twins. <laughs> yeah, from different mothers, but twins. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we celebrated their, their, fe their first birthday together. Yeah. Amazing. So, but how was how was the first this fresh pregnancy like? Which one? The one I the one I gave birth to. Yes. Well, the fear was there, and at, when I got to the seventh month, it happened again. I went for my usual checkup with Baba, and when we were coming out of the the hospital, I started feeling dizzy, and I couldn't walk. I was like collapsing, so I held on to Baba. Baba said, if you won't leave me, I'm also not strong. So you see, the, the security men saw that we were struggling, so they had to rush in and hold me, and they brought the, 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 is it the, the chair, the wheelchair, and then straight they carried me to the, 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 the recovery room. I was shivering. Apparently, I had gotten malaria. I was shivering. So they had to put off all the aircon. I was in the hospital for five, uh, for a week and I started bleeding too so it was like and it was about the same time was it 28 weeks 29 weeks about the same time so I was like I don't think babies are meant for me so I told myself that if I lose this one I don't think I would go again I don't think I would want to go again but thank God you thank didn't God I didn't yeah. so from there the doctor gave me bed rest till I had the baby yeah. Amazing. Uh, but I wonder, when you're going through such uh, situations, I want to believe that you had a lot of support because you mentioned your mother, you mentioned your husband, your siblings, and same with Yvonne. What kind of supports? You would understand the, the best supports. Even with that, did you think they understood what you were going through? I think they did to an extent, but nobody will understand until they have gone through it. Nobody will understand. And I'll take my husband. My husband was very strong. And there were times I would ask him questions. I would, I would wonder, are you really OK? Because you seem to be OK with us. So am I the only one feeling this way? You know, and he would tell me that, no, I, I, I'm not okay, but I have to be strong for you. So that is why I, I seem okay. My mother, my mother was a mess. She, I worried about her more than I worried about myself because she was with a baby most of the time and it was difficult for her to lose a grandchild and then to see her daughter go through such pain, mm -hmm. you know. So it was difficult. But the fact that they were always there, they were always there. I mean, nobody, I was not left alone for one minute. My dad was there. I wake up in the morning. My dad has a ritual of asking me what I will eat for breakfast. And he will prepare it himself if he has to. You know, um, my in-laws were calling, making sure I was fine. My aunties, uncles, friends, you know. So the support was there. Mm. Everybody was concerned. But it was not enough. It was, it was just not enough, no matter what you told me, no matter what 
uh, assurances you gave me, it was not enough. If you told me that I'll have another baby, I didn't want to hear it. I wanted that baby. Mm. I wanted my baby back. I don't want another baby, you know. So that was the that was the difficulty. And when you see, or for me, when I saw another baby, when I'm out and I saw another baby, I just everything just came back, mm. you know. And and I had to live with that for a long time. There were times I felt, oh, I'm okay. Now I think everything is fine until I probably see a fair colored. Uh, boy, because I, I was told, was and then you remember it. yours, and then I'm like, Oh my god, that could have been my son, mm. you know. Uh, yeah, so how long before um, your second child? So came? I got pregnant eight months after uh, after I lost the first one, okay. Yes, and but you still worried, I still worried. I was, I was so scared. Um, I thought it would, it would happen again. And I, I just, I just wanted to psych myself. Okay, so this is going to happen again. Mm. Um, and what, when it happens, what am I going to do? You know, so I was asking myself those questions. Um, but I was hospitalized. I was in hospital uh, for a long time, and that was when. So when Yvonne lost hers, and I was alone, it was one of the worst periods, you know, because I felt like, oh my God my support system was gone because Yvonne understood what I was going through. <laughs> I understood what she was going through and she was gone and she was grieving. So I couldn't even talk to her any longer. Mm -hmm. I felt so alone. The, the doctors explain what was going on. <laughs> they couldn't explain. They just couldn't explain. Um, <laughs> Dr. Banfu, all she said was, uh, I mean, he just couldn't explain. Because for the, the one I lost, um, the, the fourth one, Dr. Bamful was so confused. I mean, he was confused because he just didn't understand what went wrong. Because all the precautions he had to take, he took them and it still happened. So, I mean, he was confused, honestly. Yes, he was. So the, the fifth one, I mean, he took extra care. If, I mean, he, he told me that I must abide by all his rules and regulations. Because if I do anything otherwise, he gets angry, as if I'm the, the daughter, something like that. So it was like, you must just abide by his rules and regulations. So, I mean, that kept us going and it, 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 it built this relationship whereby we can just call on to him anytime. So he knows us like, <laughs> like his kids. I mean, the two of us, he knows us so well, yeah, because of these issues. But I know one of the things that could go all wrong uh, in situations like like what you've explained, uh, is husband's relationship with wife and not understanding and in-laws. And But thankfully, you didn't have issues like that. But you've been doing something on social media. You've been posting and trying to relive, even though it's really difficult, you've been trying to relive the experience. And people have been relating to what you've been sharing. Tell us about it. Yes. So one of the things I did when I was in hospital was to keep a journal because we were in a three-bedded ward and so we had other women coming and so we met a lot of women, a lot of families and had a lot of stories. So I kept all of them in a journal and I told myself because I'm a writer, one day I'll write about it. And so these are some of the stories that I'm writing on, on social media and I'm putting it out there because I want people to know that, look, you are not alone in this, you know. And for every story I put up, somebody would respond and say, this is my story, as though you know me, as though you are in my house, you know. So it is real. These issues are so real. And they are more prevalent than we know. Mm. When I started posting these stories, I realized that, wow. And nobody's talking about them. Uh, and I wonder why. I wonder why nobody's talking about them. So it's could it, could it also be that maybe people are not sharing because you hardly hear real life um, stories being shared like you're doing with us today? Maybe some people just don't want to put their, maybe their personal issues out there. But they don't know that when they do that, they are encouraging other people that it's real.
come so they, they they need to encourage themselves they shouldn't like lock up or like quell back I mean, it, it's part of life. You Once you fall down, it doesn't mean you, you have to stay there. You need to get up and move on. For my mind, I have lost four and I had to still go again. But others, after that, they just decided, no, I wouldn't go again. The pain is too much. But we just want them to know that, I mean, they are not alone. We have other people going through the same situation. Yeah. And we, we thank you for coming out and sharing this. But you even want to go a step further and open your doors and let people share um, their stories. So there's something happening later today. Yes. yes. So um, this whole um, experience that I had, that Yvonne had, that all the other women I met had, um, spared me on to start start a series of seminars to talk about some of these issues and um, out of that is born a, a concept we have named live move have your being um, from the Bible a verse from the Bible um, that talks about living your life and moving as an advancing and then uh, your total wellness you know having your being your total wellness and so the concept uh, the whole idea is to bring urban women, urban families together to talk about real life experiences, real life experiences related to pregnancy, related to fertility. Some people I have spoken to have uh, tried for babies for several years and are unable to and they are in a fix, they are depressed. So the whole idea or the whole point of live what have your been is to get people together to talk about these issues, mm -hmm. make us understand that they are real and then get experts to help, get experts to support, get experts to counsel, to guide. And these experts are medical experts, psychological experts, and spiritual experts. But um, for instance, I'll talk about Yvonne again. After she lost the fourth one, uh, she needed something more than uh, what the doctor would say. Mm. She needed psychological help. She needed spiritual help. She needed to pray. She needed to put herself you know, under God's uh, guidance yeah. at that time. Because that was what she needed, really. And that's what sustained her. And when she was pregnant, you know, the prayer also sustained her till she gave birth. So uh, we want to reach out to women, we want to mm. reach out to families, uh, to come together. Let's hear our stories. Let's hear what other women have gone through. And let's share and let's help. Mm. So this is happening at what time in the venue? So it's happening at uh, Coconut Group Hotel at 6 p.m., um, 6 to 8. We are there two hours. Um, we'd have real life experiences shared, and then we'd have our doctor, our psychologist, and our pastor mm -hmm. um, speak on issues. Okay. People have the chance to ask questions, um, share their own experiences if mm -hmm. they do. And even more importantly, after the event, you have the opportunity to get connected to the help that you need. Mm. So, for instance, if you need medical help, we are able to connect you to the right doctor. Mm. If you need psychological help, we're able to connect you to psychologists. If you need spiritual help, we're able to connect you to a, a pastor. Okay. Is there an existing network? Because Yvonne and yourself, I see that you're very good friends. Uh, and that friendship also kept you going. Mm. Have you expanded that? Are there more friends? Yes, yes. So now <laughs> we, we have a lot of friends who, who have also gone through. I'm, I'm sure, as she said, we are organizing a series of seminars. They would come on board and they would share their stories and people would get to know of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because I, somebody might be watching and might want to quickly get in touch. Uh, because if you, if you talk to me, because I probably haven't gone through, I may not be able to relate. Mm. But they think, oh, let me talk to other women who have been there who have lived it, they can better understand. So let me get in touch with them. That's why I asked, is there an existing mm. um, network like that? Yes, so well, you can reach out to us. We have a, a Facebook page, uh, Live, Move, Have Your Being. Uh, we have a Twitter handle at, uh, at LMB series. That's Live, Move, Have Your Being series. You can also connect with us on phone. So you can reach us on 0246. Four two five seven four three. Again, zero two four six four two five seven four three.
and um, call us um, if you want to share your story call us we'll put you we'll put you uh, we'll add you to the group and um, there'll be a number of them the next uh, seminar you may be the one sharing your story and you would definitely have a success story how important finally how important uh, is it sharing your sp your personal story talking about it how does it feel maybe i should ask mm. how does it feel now mm. sharing your story with the entire world you, you didn't think about it that way yeah. but that's what it is yeah. <laughs> you know that's true <laughs> i think it's it's uh it's relieving um it's it's fulfilling because i'm doing it for a bigger uh for the greater good you know and i feel that finally i can sit here and talk about it mm. and and not cry and not feel like the world has cheated me yeah you know and and, and it's a great feat for me yeah yes I will ask you the same question. How does it feel? Well, I, I personally, I, I'm excited about this whole thing because it's more like trying to encourage other women that they should not, they should not give up. And the, 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 the mere fact that you've lost a baby is not the end of the world. I mean, you need to move on and God will be your, 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 your guide and he would help you and he'll see you through. I've got one curious question. Are you going again? <laughs> well, I don't know yet. I don't know yet, honestly. For me, I would have ended here. But I, I think my husband wants more. But I don't know. Let's see what, what okay. happens. We wish you well. Baba, are you Thank going you. again? Uh, there's a full stop exclamation. I, I have put a full stop. <laughs> <laughs> I have put a full stop. Okay. Um, and that's another issue. Sometimes when you go through so many surgeries, you know, it's not advisable. Mm -hmm. So for now, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies, uh, for sharing with us. We, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. All right. Ah, uh, that's, uh, this conversation is, is one that, um, I don't know what you may be going through, and some of you have been sending us messages. So, for instance, somebody wants to know there was an identified problem that led Yvonne to lose three children, and also how the doctors managed to stop the problem uh, if there was. This is the thing. One, I think one of the things they told me yesterday was the fact that, Roland, when you're going through this, you really don't care what the problem is. You even as though in, as in you don't want to know the reasons why you you're I mean you're losing medical. you're losing what you know is you get pregnant it goes on for a while you're carrying the pregnancy it gets to the point where everybody sees that you're pregnant and, and then, then suddenly you know that, you that lose it psychologically like you a bad yeah problem, so there are so many things but of course there were uh, you know reasons that the doctors would give that's mm. why they have they're actually sitting down today and sharing one of them would share their story mm. Mm. and then they would have doctors and other people to wow, address people's wow. concern that will be at the coconut grove later today so i wanted to give a number so that um if you want to have interactions with them you absolutely can so you can call zero two four six two five seven four um zero two four six i beg your pardon four two five seven four three zero two four six four two five seven four three and be a part of what they're doing today uh, it's real life pregnancy tale they call it they say uh, ask the tough questions to our resource people it's today at the coconut grove hotel and it's 6 p.m you can meet barbara and yvonne as well as other friends that they have who have all gone through uh, what they were sharing with us if you're pregnant we wish you well with your pregnancy hmm. yeah. it's, it's always i always say uh, the blessing always comes when it has to come. If yeah. it doesn't come, it means that psychologically and because of the way our society and social cultural uh, norms are, uh, we tend to have a, a certain heavy burden yeah. lay, laid on the heads of, 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 of these women. That's and true. especially even sometimes when it prolongs, it gets to the man. Yeah. So you need strong couples who would have to endure some of these things that we do to some of these um, 
some of these men and women yeah. that we have in our society. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely. Say that one, so. Well, and we have that conversation. Remember the, the gentleman we, we talked to you about when we started the show? He dropped from France. Mm -hmm. Uh, How did he do Sagana. that? In what car? In ah, which car? Is he a Citroen ah, or a, ah, a Rene? Or? Ah, or like in the, an Elantra? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh, no. Il Elantra. The Hyundai. Uh, yeah. okay. From France. Well, he's here in Elantra the studio. From France. He's here in the studio. So well, this is what is going to happen. Roland is going to talk about Habitat Fair because we absolutely uh, also want you to own a home. We'll tell you how you can do that. But... I want to take this one. I want to go out there and see the car and speak to this gentleman. Mm. And I, if you're in Takwa, his family is in Takwa, by the way. So you might want to knock on every door and tell them to watch. Uh, this is coming up in uh, a few minutes. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be in a few minutes. Yeah. But first, we have the Habitat Fair conversation. Stay with us.